I never thought it was possible for the fifth Transformers movie to actually be the worst of the franchise, especially considering 2009's second installment, Revenge of the Fallen, was such a disaster. Director Michael Bay began this series 10 years ago with a cool, fun, coming-of-age story of a teen and his relationships with cars that transformed into giant talking robots. But T5 proves that the on-screen exploitation of the 80s toy action figures has gone on long enough. Transformers The Last Night is reportedly the final installment that both Bay and Mark Wahlberg will be involved in. It should also be the finale of the series, which has reached new lows on the tolerability meter. T5 is an absolute mess. At just under two and a half hours, The Last Night is the shortest Transformers since the original, but it feels like the longest, as Bay jams in so much involving the human characters, old and new, all those Autobots and Decepticons, and countless and mindless action sequences. Problems begin right at the start, as Bay opens with a backstory set in the time of King Arthur. It features Stanley Tucci as Merlin, the comedian magician. You may remember that Tucci played the wacky Joshua in Transformers 4. Apparently no one was supposed to remember that. Following the most epic flash forward in movie history, 1600 years later, we catch up with Wahlberg's Cade Yeager and his never-ending battle to protect and defend the remaining Autobots on Earth, including best buddy Bumblebee. Government troops are looking to wipe out the entire race of Transformers. Cade has two new human sidekicks a young orphan girl, and a goofy tech nerd. Both characters couldn't be more mechanical. We're also introduced to Oxford professor Vivianne, who becomes Cade's obligatory love interest, and a senile historian named Sir Edmund Burton. Anthony Hopkins and his talking robot sidekick, which one Autobot accurately refers to as a C-3PO knockoff, make for the year's kookiest, most embarrassing on-screen pairing. The plot, if you can call it that, is basically made up of an endless series of confrontations amongst and between the humans and the machines. But Bay has even slipped in this department. The visuals aren't impressive at all, with the Transformers themselves actually looking more unrealistic than ever before. And there are continuity errors and aspect ratio issues throughout. It's as if Bay himself got tired of this series while making the film and just went into autopilot to get it done. The shockingly quick closing credits support this theory. To paraphrase a line from the script of an Autobot describing a colleague, The Last Night is the most irritating and annoying Transformers ever. In a recent interview, Anthony Hopkins called Michael Bay a genius. Here's hoping he was still in character at the time. On the official LCJ report card, Transformers The Last Night gets a D minus. I'm Lights Camera Jackson. Check out all of my reviews at lights-camera-jackson.com and follow me on Twitter at LCJ Reviews.